Fluffy Mine by Echo Rainstorm on AO3. Episode 4. Chapter 4. Change. Izuku clung to Katsuki. I'll miss you, Kachan, Izuku whispered. Mitsuki enveloped him in a tight hug. Oh, Izuku, sweetie, we will miss you dearly. Masaru joined in. The warmth of the family offering comfort Izuku won't have any more. Namayasa walked over and gently held Izuku's hands. Izuku. He began walking to the car. Izuku climbed into the car. The air inside felt heavy as he buckled himself. He didn't need help, after all. He was a big boy. Izuku! Bakugo shouted. Izuku turned and saw Katsuki being held back by Mitsuki. He had tears running down his face. I'll see you in UA, furball! Bakugo shouted. I'll see you in UA, Izuku shouted back. Inside, a lady with dual purple and pink hair was behind the wheel. Lady Nagat? <gasps> Where are we going? The Hero Commission. She replied, her tone businesslike. It's my dream to be a hero, you know? Izuku shared, his eyes shining. She opened her mouth, but closed it, and started the car. As the familiar streets of his neighborhood faded into the distance, Izuku felt a pang of sadness. The familiar streets, the comfort of his mother's embrace, all of it was just memories now, destined to fade and slip through his fingers. Izuku should never have outlived his mother. All of this was too much change for a seven-year-old child to go through. But the world was cruel, after all. The Hero Commission stood tall and imposing. The exterior was sleek and modern, bustling with activity as heroes of all kinds entered and exited its doors. The parking lot beneath the Hero Commission building was a stark contrast to the bustling activity above. It was dimly lit, with concrete walls and floors that echoed footsteps. As they stepped out of the car, Izuka looked around and got closer to Lady Nagant. He was a big boy, but Mother said big boys can be scared. She led the way, her confident strides contrasting with Izuku's hesitant steps. They made their way to the elevators, the doors opening with a soft ding. Inside the elevator, the interior darkness gave away to a soft, ambient lighting. Izuku couldn't help but feel a bit apprehensive as the elevator began its ascent. When they finally reached above ground, the elevator's glass panels illuminated with the natural light filtering in. Izuku's eyes widened as he caught sight of the world beyond the building. The city skyline stretched out before him, buildings of varying heights and designs creating a picturesque scene against the sky. But what truly captured Izuku's attention was the sight of a teen hero soaring through the air besides the building. The boy had bright red wings that gleamed in the sunlight, and his blonde hair fluttered as he flew effortlessly. Izuku's face lit up with delight, and he pressed his hand against the glass, waving enthusiastically at the teen. To his surprise and joy, the boy noticed Izuku and returned his wave with a friendly smile. As the elevator reached their floor, the doors opened, Izuku followed Lady Nagant out into the lobby. Inside was a hive of movement and energy. Heroes in colorful costumes mingled with people in suits, their conversations blending into a lively hum. Izuku's eyes widened with wonder as he took in the sight of heroes he had only seen on TV. Lady Nagant guided Izuku through the bustling lobby, her stern demeanor contrasting with the vibrant atmosphere around them. She led Izuku down the hall, lined with portraits of legendary heroes. All Might's iconic smile, Endeavor's fierce gaze, Best Gina's stylish pose, all captured in vivid detail. They arrived at the door, and Lady Nagant ushered Izuku inside a meeting room. The room was spacious, with a large table at its center surrounded by comfortable chairs. The walls were adorned with certificates and awards, showcasing the commission's prestigious history. Seated at the table was a man with striking red hair and piercing green eyes. 
he excluded an air of authority, his demeanor calm, yet commandering. He wore a formal suit, the colors complementing his fiercely hair. The room fell into a hushed silence as a man addressed Izuku. Oh, hello. You must be little Izuku Midoriya. Are you excited to get a new family? Lena Nagant set an intense stare at the man. Izuku nodded so slightly, you would have missed it if you weren't looking. You must be so proud of your mother. She was a true hero. Your mother fought to keep you from that man. She saved many with her information about your dad. You should be proud of her. Her death kept others safe. Izuku's eyes glistened with unshed tears as he nodded slowly. For Izuku, pride was overshadowed by the aching of loss, the void left by his mother's absence. Izuku's thoughts drifted to memories of his mother, her warm smile, her comforting embrace, the way she believed in him no matter what. He wanted her to be here, to see him fulfill his dreams of becoming a hero. His mother's sacrifice had sent him on this path. The path he would walk alone, yearning for her presence. He was not proud of what she did. He just wanted her to come back. Lena Nagant's piercing gaze bore into the other man. Then, her gaze softened as she turned to Izuku. Midoriya, you want to be a hero, right? Izuku raised his eyes from the floor. His gaze met hers. Mm-hmm, he murmured softly. You know how heroes often have to keep things a secret? Like missions? Yeah, like in a mission. Well, you're now in a mission, like a hero. I am? Is it like training to be a hero? Yup, you're gonna have to keep your mom and everything that happened a secret, okay? Oh. Okay, you will get new parents for your mission. You will have to be a happy family, okay? A new family, okay. Lena Nagant's firm tone cut through the air as she directed her words to the man. All right, do your thing. Her eyes fixed on the process unfolding before them. Izuku looked back down to the ground as the other person approached him. You're going to feel a little dizzy but it's okay. I'm gonna have to use my cork on you. They exclaimed calmly. Izuku's eyes widened. Your quirk? What is it? He asked eagerly. The redhead let out a light laugh. I can change one's DNA, and we will be changing yours. As they prepared to administer the necessary procedure, inserting a needle into Izuku. Oh, cool. How... does if it... Work. He inquired, his voice starting to fade as drowsiness crept over him. As Izuku faded into unconsciousness, the man reached for a bottle of liquid, but Lady Nagant inverted swiftly. No, she stated firmly. We are not erasing his memories. That is not happening. Just do what you have to so I can drive into his new home. But he will not forget his mother. Namoyasa. Again, thank you so much. I feel bad for asking such a big favor. Toshinori. Nonsense. I would gladly do it again. I'm just glad young Midoriya is now in safe hands. Namoyasa. Yeah. Toshinori. How have you been holding up? Namoyasa. I've been fine. Toshinori. Do not lie to me. Namoyasa. I'll live. I'm more worried about Izuku. I decided that after every chapter, I'm going to be telling you guys the name of the next chapter. So next chapter is going to be called Chapter 5, New House. As always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content. And thank you so much for watching.